Welcome to The Football Show with me, Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tam McManus with me here on this Monday. It is absolutely fantastic to be back. We're ready for the new season and hopefully you and many others will be joining us regularly Monday to Friday at four o'clock on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you hit the notification bell, uh, you'll be informed of when we're on and all our special features throughout the season. Uh, and as ever, Ruffy, we are planning bigger and better as we do yep. every season because this is us 10 in a row who gets yep. 10 in a row in this I know, country so we said that last year that <laughs> some of are due a testimonial <laughs> you know, but, uh, we'll have to, no it's, it's just great to be back isn't it i think the break was too long yeah have far you, far too long have yeah. you met the queen yet we just want to know no, because I haven't obviously met the queen. lots of people are want to call you sir alan i'm obviously just going to keep with ruffy is that yeah, okay ruffy's fine with me uh, <laughs> he said to me better call me surfing on the outside <laughs> No, said. I haven't, haven't been yet. Yeah. I haven't had the letter to see where I have to go for that. Uh, yeah. But I wouldn't have got it if I hadn't been in here for 10 years. Well, to be fair, <laughs> <No>. it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's services to football. and uh, it, it, Is that what it's for? It's services services uh, to football and charity work. <laughs> <laughs> the Alan Ruff Foundation. We've <laughs> seen the Alan, Found Alan Ruff Foundation at work. Uh, that second part, he knows why I'm laughing, that's brilliant. Um, anyway, uh, listen, you do a lot of work for uh, charity as well, but nevertheless, absolutely magnificent. I'm delighted for you, Ruffy. It'll be a great day. I mean, you get the top hat on, Tam, and you get down there, you get your MBE, you keep the medal, it's magic. No, brilliant. You must be looking forward to it. Going down ah, I must have said to you, the, the only whole family going down. The whole family's going down, but the disappointing thing is, from your, well, you'll understand, your mum and dad are there. Aye, and yes. I think your mum and dad is yeah. other people you want to be at an occasion like that. Hey, I'll tell you one thing Tam won't be aware of, Ruffy. Your mum loved the show. Yes, yeah, she did. She used to, in the early days, she used to phone us up and say, what's he wearing and all that. <laughs> 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 that is, if you'd said something about me, she would be phoning up and going, hey, cut that out. <laughs> so, uh, listen, we're delighted you're back uh, 10 seasons. We're delighted that you could uh, join us as well. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. We've got it on the app as well. And we also would like to thank so many people who've been listening in the podcast and downloading the podcast as well. Um, there's lots of big surprises coming up over the next few months on PLZ Soccer that hopefully uh, you will join in with. But it, it's another season. All the things that have been won last season are now on the back burner. Not necessarily forgotten about out with fans but it's now a new season with new hopes uh, Tam we've got a little taster of it um, with regards to the Premier Sports Cup but everybody's looking forward to this weekend when it really starts in earnest yeah I don't think there's anything better than being a, being a fan the first game of the season usually the sun's shining you know you've got your ambitions you think oh the team's done well in pre-season <coughs> we're going to have a great season sometimes it doesn't work out like that um, every supporter will go with hype with dreams you know this could be your year winning a cup you know out with Celtic Rangers it could be a Hearts or a Hibs or a Ross County. Anybody could win a cup on their day, and you know the other team, Celtic Rangers, will be wanting to, you know, win the league and have a good run in the Champions League. So, you know, the first game of the season, I think, is always it's always a great day, and uh, you know, a lot of dreams can be shattered. You know, in ninety minutes when you think your team's going to be decent <laughs> and you get pumped, uh, or else you know you're not expecting much, and you might be getting an upset someday. So. Looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you've decided to, um, you've been a Bond villain before over the period that you've been with us. And now you, it's a kind of a Roger Whittaker, uh, Acker Bilk look for the benefit of no, our older. No, uh, have you got somebody crime. in mind? Oh, Sheriffing Ontingham. Yes. The Sheriff of Nottingham <laughs> and Robin Hood. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, Alan Rickman. Yes, yeah, exactly. With that quiff. Sam, you never, ever fail to amaze me with uh, the gear that you've got. Anyway, apart from anything else, uh, thanks very much. Um, also, uh, a big hello to so many people who are joining us. Uh, again, realising we are back on YouTube. Uh, thanks to Bob White, Tom McDougall, uh, so many um, who want to talk about football issues. And we will indeed, uh, across our YouTube channel uh, and if you want to drop us a message you can if you download the PLZ Soccer app you can actually hit the submissions and put in uh, what you want to say and we'd love to have you on board there we'll be giving away lots more prizes too and uh, Hugh Scott says Peter I see we'll get Tam the Musketeer with us Hugh <laughs> I, I, I can't disagree with you the, the look uh, is utterly unique can I just say that one of our uh, and I wish Laurie was his name um, won the competition to have his favourite player of all time um, painted by Geo Thompson mm, that's right and I drove through Ruffy 
Um, I think he lived somewhere in Fife, um, Laurie, and I, and I delivered uh, a big painting of Kenny Dalglish to him. And he took me out to the back, showed us his man cave with all the stuff that he has in it, and the, the Kenny Dalglish uh, painting will go up there. So Good, that's good. It's went somewhere worthwhile, you know. It's great. These new man caves now seem to be the place. Yeah. You know, you have your own team and all your stuff and get your pals over and that. So I'm sure that, that photo... Ruffy's house well. is just one big man cave, isn't it? Ruffy's house is an absolutely fantastic man cave. Have you got one or is obviously because you're... I've, got a, I've got a spare room which is a, bit of, a wee bit of a man cave with my strips and that up in the wall and yeah. a wee projector on the... Just a spare room, but not no really a, a man cave. Everybody's got to have one, to be honest with you. Um, OK, uh, Tam, uh, last season uh, you were uh, working occasionally for the High Bs on a regular basis in the home games. Um, this season you're going to be doing a lot more here with PLZ Soccer, uh, so it's a good chance for us to get the boot right in. <laughs> <laughs> right into your team. That's it. Well, no one for Hibs anyway, well, so I, say, I can I mean, be for, honest. For God's sake, I mean, the, the last, let's have a look first of all at the last 16 draw, which Hibs are not in, may I add. Um, here's how it looks Rangers against Queen of the South, Partick Thistle against our broth, uh, Motherwell Inverness, Cali Thistle, Livingston Dundee United, Dundee against Falkirk. Annan will take on Aberdeen. It's Hearts against Kilmarnock, which is a belter uh, for Derek McInnes <laughs> to get his teeth into. And Ross County against Celtic. Now, um, first of all, uh, let, the good thing about this programme is we'll try and offer our opinion and as balanced as possible. He's the unknown quantity in Lee Johnson. People are wondering, OK, what's he going to offer to the game? Yeah, he is. Listen, he's got a great, he's a great pedigree in England. Uh, but I think when you come up from England to Scotland, it's a, it's a different league. It's a different kettle of fish. You've got to be careful what you're saying. Uh, it's a small country and, you know, they've picked up on obviously he's not been happy about Hibs coming back early. Uh, but I, I, I totally disagreed with that. I think that when you're a big club like a Hibs or an Aberdeen, Aberdeen have won four games out of four, you know, started the season well. You're playing against part-time teams, you know, who are just come back for the holidays. You know, you've got full-time professionals. Hibs have got a big squad of players. I fully expected Hibs to win four games out of four. Yeah. You know, no, no disrespect to Falkirk, Bonnie Rig Rose, Clyde or Morton. I thought Hibs get four wins on the board, you get into the season with confidence. They didn't do that, you know, they've got put out. Um, they obviously, the anonymity of, you know, Rocky Bashiri, you know, not being eligible as well. Yeah. Um, so it's not been a great start for Hibs, and a lot of the Hibs supporters now, you know, after a really bad season last year, you want to see some positivity coming out of the club, and there's not been much. You know, Ron Gordon's come out and had a little moan about the fixture list, you know, playing Hearts so early as well. And I remember when I was at Hibs, we played Hearts in the first game of the season, away at, at Tynecastle, and nobody batted an eyelid. So I think the, the talking's got to stop, you know, in terms of Hibs, Lee Johnson, the chairman. The talking's got to stop. You've got to do the business on the pitch, and it starts at McDermott Park on Saturday because the Hibs supporters are, you know, they've no, I don't think they've took too kindly to the manager at the minute. Yeah. And uh, they want to see better product on the pitch. Well, strangely enough, um, I think it's always early days, um, and I don't think there's, I don't think there's a need for knee-jerk reaction on it, Ruffy. Um, I agree with Tam. I think you know that whole situation of uh, wanting to move the league cup. I don't know about you, but if, even if somebody offered me a three-course meal to go and watch a friendly, I wouldn't go because I just think it's a complete waste of time. It's a wee day out, maybe for some people to take their kids who wouldn't normally go to a game and enjoy all the colour of <coughs> going to to your team, and maybe you've missed the buzz of it. But some of them, I just think, are mean, a meaningless stroll in the park. The League Cup games mm. yeah. are at this end of the season to start that, to take it away, to yeah. get that competitive edge, and Hibs just haven't been good enough. Although. Aberdeen started last season on fire and then had one of their worst seasons. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're going to Aberdeen first, I mean, Aberdeen, I know they've had four wins, but look who they've had the four wins against. They've not been challenged at all. So you'll take the four wins and you'll move on and go into the next game. As far as Hibs are concerned, I just don't think they're strengthened enough. You know, you look what they've done up at Aberdeen, yeah. Jim Goodwin's an absolute clear out there, you know, and brought new players in. And as Tam said, fans love new players. Somebody get your head round. I don't think there's been enough done at Hibs. And I, I, I think, as Tam said, the disappointment for the Hibs fans last year, I think it's still going to be there this year. Yeah. I, I think, just think, the thing with Hibs is they've, they've taken a punt on a lot of players. They've brought in a lot of young players with potential. They've also brought in David Marshall and Aidan McGeady, who I think will be two great signings. But that was, that's the cal. They needed another, another couple of them, you yeah. know, that type of player. Is there any chance of them getting out like a Martin Boyle back? That would be great. If if see if they see if they had boiled by. I'm not saying it's on the cards. 
you know, there was a wee suggestion that Jim Goodwin quickly shot down that McGeady was going to come back to, uh, Boyle was coming back to uh, Scotland and to Aberdeen, and I think he's blown that out of the water. But if Hibs could get a Boyle back and suddenly you've got McGeady, I think McGeady is going to be, I'm a big fan of him. Mm. I think his assists will be something that Hibs haven't had in a long while. Yeah, I watched him against Morton, particularly second half. He put so many balls into the box, out his feet, ball into the box. Hibs were crying out for that last year. Um, I hope he's known penalty duty because uh, yeah. he's missed two so far. <laughs> but you can see his quality. Uh, David Marshall's been ve- very good as well. But as I said, Hibs have took a punt on a lot of younger players, and he you- you- needs Lee Johnson needs them to be more hit than miss um, because he's. You know, as I said, all right, a year, two years down the line, these, these 18, 19 year old, 20 year old guys are, are very good. But that's no use to him if he's not there anymore. He, he get the fruits of that. So, Hibs are going to be, I think, you know, up and down. You know, they're, going to be, they're not going to be a team with consistency. I think one week they're going to go win two or three nothing and they might get beat the following week because they've got that kind of, that's their age group, that's the kind of players they've signed. Yeah. Okay, one good thing that Lee Johnson did point out, which I think is absolutely right on the mark, is quite simply that the job of trying to constantly check who's been suspended, who's ineligible to play in a game is a nonsense, Ruffy. I think <clears> he's <throat> right. They do it down in England. It should be adopted up here. The SFA should just say to you, listen, if you're playing in this game this weekend, this guy can play, this guy can't. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, that uh, these kind of mistakes do get made, but the, the, the official people should be on top of it. A, a long time ago, I don't think he's there now, Sandy Bryson, who was fantastic, you know, any time you wanted to know about players who transfers or deadlines or things like that. Sandy Bryson was right on it all the time. I don't know if things have changed now, whether they obviously do leave it up to the clubs. But somebody at the club, if, if it's not a specific job they've got to do, is, there's going to be mistakes. So I agree with them, you know, they, they should take... There's that meant much staff at the SFA. Surely somebody could designate themselves to sort that out. Yeah. Um, OK, that's uh, the League Cup. We've had a look at the uh, last 16 draw. What do you make of it, Ruffy? I mean, it's, it's a, it, I mean, at least you can say you've made the quarterfinals yeah. before our broth pump you. No, I don't think we're going to have <laughs> The one pleasing thing is we're not going to our broth. Yeah. Because we'll probably be a gale force wind blown up there. So we've got a good park. With a good surface. Oh, he's spent very, all the money. Very, very green. Is anybody uh, playing on it this season other than you? Nobody. Fantastic. At all. Nobody at all. So, if Nate's excuses. Is... We do have a problem. Uh huh. What do you think my problem is on the park? Your problem is that Collie has turned round to the board and said, I need another three no. players. <laughs> the, problem, the problem I have on the park is a fox. What? We have a fox who's digging holes in the, in the park. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. they're coming in and digging. I don't know what they're trying to burrow into, but there's three massive holes on the park, and we're trying to find out if anybody out there has got a solution how you can stop a fox coming on the park. Yeah, we've had a fantastic idea from one of the the supporters who say we should go. It's not to right, the zoo. was it? <laughs> go to the zoo. <laughs> we should go to the zoo and get some lion's manure, and you put lion's manure in the park, and the fox obviously think, oh. There's a lion. There's a lion here. <laughs> <laughs> and then there would be foxes when you're on the pitch yeah, as well. Exactly. But no, uh, Ruffy, I muscle. don't know that. that I mean, it is, <laughs> it, it is funny that you've said that, and I know people think you're at the wind up, but the, the downside to that in today's world, Tom, somebody's going to be offended uh, if this will sort out the fox yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, you're too, you're no, no. treading a fine line yeah, here. Yeah. By I mean, the the, the, there are problems out there that we people don't know. I mean, at Aberdeen, they've got a massive problem. With seagulls, yeah, absolutely, and yeah. they've got they've got a hawk that right. they let go, yeah, to obviously scare the the seagulls before the match starts. So these things that supporters don't <clears throat> actually know are happening are out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, you, we've got to accommodate all species on this planet. Sometimes no along foxes. the way, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> along the way, um, when they all get together, it becomes a problem, especially for you guys. Um, I, th- there's no point in me asking you who's going to win the League Cup um, because <laughs> we've got lots of people on here giving us thanks to Thomas McDougall who's already steamed right in but Thomas we're only minutes into the programme and he's gone predictions for this season Peter Rangers for the League and the Scottish Cup and Celtic for the League Cup uh, and Rangers and Celtic to do well in Europe this season Thomas um, I'll tell you one thing I really do hope and, and this brings me nicely on to and I, I don't want to start this, the programme off in a negative fashion but I do hope Rangers and Celtic do well in Europe. 
But I want to see the other clubs do well, and I, I have to say, Tam, Motherwell are an embarrassment <laughs> the other night. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when Bevis McGabby heads that ball, I'm saying no, not not even not even your most amateur of centre half would have thought it was a good idea to try and head the ball back when you're nowhere near the 18 yard box, and suddenly they're in Sligo and they score a goal. And it was Motherwell were terrible. Yeah, it's a really disappointing result. You're right, Celtic and Rangers, particularly Rangers, over the last couple of seasons, you know, have really been pushing that coefficient up. You know, and the, the, the teams like Motherwell and St Johnson have been bearing the fruits of that. You know, this season, Hearts obviously going into guaranteed group stages. You know, whether it's the Europa League or the Conference League. So, but you've, you need, we need other teams to be to be getting results. Sligo Rovers. I mean, no disrespect to the Irish League. Played there myself, a couple of teams. They'll come and they'll be fit. They're halfway through their season. Motherwell should have enough quality to take care of them. You know, you don't mind getting beat by a Dutch team, you know, or a, a team for Croatia, maybe something like that. A, a team for Ireland would be highly embarrassing, I think, for Motherwell. And they've got a lot of work to do next next Thursday away to Sligo. Played there, the showgrounds, we tight ground. You know, it's going to be really difficult for Motherwell to come back for that. But we need your Motherwells and your Hearts eh, to go and, and, and get, get through a couple of stages and get the coefficient up. It can't just be Rangers and Celtic all the time. Yeah, I, we definitely need that. I mean, that is a sad indictment of where we are in this game, roughly, at mm. times. I, I thought Rangers, as a club individually, enhanced their reputation. And, and so many managers, and I think Antonio Conte was the, the latest from the Spurs friendly, raving about what Rangers achieved in getting to uh, the Europa League final. And rightly so, they deserved all the plaudits. But it's Rangers, uh, you know, and it's potentially Celtic, and the rest of them, there's a huge gap, Ruffy, in the mm -hmm. quality. And I think we're going to see that 20 to 25 point gap again, third yeah. to second. And, and what they do in Europe, again, I think we need to change something to try and enhance their fortunes. Yeah, I think that last year the only three teams for me were Rangers, Celtic and Hearts. I thought the disappointment out there for Hibs, Aberdeen and the rest, Motherwell, St Martin, the rest were just... Livingston gave us good value for the games because they give you something different for everybody else but yeah I mean it just shows you Rangers get to a, a European Cup final and once you get to a final and then you try to sign players players want to come for you yeah you know, the absolutely. first thing they go is who, who is it Rangers and if it'd been Rangers three or four years ago be no I'm no way am I going there yeah but now you're in a team who's attracting quality players and you want to be part of that you're obviously getting a good deal when you come you've got European football and that's the success that they're having. Well, Niall, who's been a, a, an ever-present, is one of our uh, fans of the show, is a Motherwell fan, obviously. It says they need to get the finger out on Thursday night um, to get past uh, Sligo because Sparta Prague or Viking of Norway. I mean, I think everybody anticipates Sparta Prague. When I was looking at the draw and where it was going, I thought to myself, well, Motherwell are not going to get past Sparta Prague. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a sad indictment of our game. I do, and I'm not going to be xenophobic with this, uh, Tam, I do like to see um, you know, quality added from other countries because that's the nature of football these days. But I think the more we develop um, the right way to play the game and see young Scottish people coming through um, to get the opportunity to try and give us an opportunity to play our style of football and get clubs more and more quality to get to the group stages is of paramount importance. The other flip side of this, which I, I was banging on about last season is, Tam, we can't get more money to the clubs because we can't get multiple sponsors. It doesn't matter what way mm. you look at it. We can't get multiple sponsors because... Well, that's another argument, isn't it, Neil Doncaster and really SPFL? We, but but if, if, if one of them got to the group stages, I mean, hearts are guaranteed to <coughs> be yep. football. That's yep. three million pounds. No, it's, it's huge, and, and that's, that's because of particularly Rangers over the last couple of seasons have been pushing that coefficient up, you know, and that's the, the Hearts are, are getting the benefit of that. And all the clubs get money as well, you know, when Celtic Rangers do well, they get into group stages, you know, Europa League, Champions League, the clubs get that money as well, but if you're signing foreign players, you've got, you're, they've got to be better than the Scottish players that are there. I think if you're a manager, a Scottish manager, or, or a manager managing in Scotland, you've got to be looking at your own academy first, your youth team, your reserves, right, who have I got coming through? And then you look, to, then you look abroad, listen, We've had great guys here, the De Boer brothers, Frank Sozzi, you know, Russell Lappy guys I played with, top quality form players that, that yeah. the young players can learn off of, but there's also been a lot of diddies, you know, let's be honest, a lot of a guff that's came for Europe and they've stopped young Scottish players coming through. And uh, I think there's got to be, there's got to be a balance between having good, experienced European players who young players can learn off of 
and uh, and, and a good you know players coming through for your youth setup that's going to go and push. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's of paramount importance, and and obviously we want to see uh, good football. On, I thought Motherwell Surface was good the other night there as well. Yeah. Motherwell Surface, like no excuses, Ruffy. It was dreadful. No, no, no. I was speaking to Alan, Alan Burrows. We played Motherwell the week before, uh, and that would be the only excuse I would give them. They've only had two games, you know, and it's, they've had twenty odd. So you got to give them a wee bit of leeway. But you would think the quality that they had. But Alan was saying the pitch. They spent a lot, a lot of money on the pitch to make it even better than what it was. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like a bowling green. Mm. It's yeah. magnificent. And I don't want to, at this point, um, talk about any... Well, I mean, listen, lots of people who follow the programme <laughs> mention managers under pressure. But uh, I think it's important, you know, there are certain managers I think, you know, really need to have a wee bit of momentum at the start of the season. Dare I say it, Callum Davison's one of them. Mm. Graham Alexander is another. I'm not so sure I agree with Tam on the Lee Johnson situation. I think he'll be given mm-hmm. I think he'll be given eighteen games and then no, I think he'll be given time, eh? I think no no. I think he'll be given eighteen games <laughs> All right. bulleted because that's oh. what that's what your mob do. Oh. They give people eighteen games. They've got they've got to get nineteen Sean got. I think nineteen or twenty games Sean got and uh, you know they compounded the mistake with sacking Jack Ross, which was a terrible decision. And I think Ron Gordon's already said that, you know, it was a mistake to do that, but they've compounded it by you know, go and get a very inexperienced manager and then not giving him an opportunity. So they've got to give Lee Johnson at least a season. At least a season. Hey, I'll tell you which, another one that could have been a good signing for you and I don't know what happened. It would have been great to get Stephen Fletcher back at Hibs and he ends up at Dundee United. I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Yep. Um, I'm friends with Stephen Fletcher. I know he, want, he, he, would have, he would have walked to Hibs. He wanted to go to Hibs. You know, and Hibs weren't interested. They've got Dodge there and they signed in a couple of younger players. But Stephen Fletcher... Fletcher's yeah, a better player oh, than Dodge. For me, Chris, uh, Fletcher's a better player and scoring more goals than Dodge, but yeah. uh, Stevens went to Dundee United, and I think Dundee United will be, I think they'll be good this year. I think they've got a great blend. Charlie McGrew at the back, yep. you know, Fletcher up front. You know, they've got a lot of young players, a lot of young legs. They've got Levitt back for Man United, great signing. Jack Ross, for me, is, <coughs> is, a, is, a, is a really good manager. So I think Dundee United this season will be the team that could maybe push hearts. I, I know we were off air when it happened. Did any views on why he left Dundee United? The manager. Yeah, he went. No, he, he went. I, know where he went. I think. He, I think he got a great deal financially. I think I heard yeah. he got a great deal. It was a wow. What? What's happened? Sort of yeah. a thing, you know. He wasn't the type of person that you <clears> thought would be headhunted, Tam Coach. No. I think that's probably. But I think. I think he's probably thought. Listen, he was. He was favourite for the sack race this time last season. Right, a lot of Dunedin fans didn't want him. Who's Tam Coach? He's who's he managed? I think Kelty Hearts, and I think there was a lot of derogatory statements about him and to be fair to him he went out and he'd done the business he got and done anything in Europe played yeah. a lot of young players and his stock was high so I think when you're a manager your stock's high you go and, you go and try something else and by all accounts what I've heard is he got a very very good deal in Honford uh, financially yeah okay um, well, listen uh, we could talk uh, extensively about players in and out because there's been a lot of players who obviously are out of clubs there was going to be that big clear out and then there's players that they're bringing in um so, bearing in mind the friendlies that have gone on over the weekend, it would be remiss of us not to have a look at the big two. Um, Tottenham win 2-1. Um, I, I always think sometimes friendlies at times are just a, an exercise in getting your, your match fitness up. I think a lot of Rangers fans would have enjoyed seeing Harry Kane. Yeah, a f- different class. I mean, his first goal, you know, he's, he, he just gets a yard, shifts it out his feet and, and puts it in the top corner. Second goal, ball bounces, bang. He's, he's For me, he's... If not one of the best, you know, strikers in the world, and uh, you know, a great education for Rangers fans. You know, Rangers Celtic fans they appreciate good players. You know, if you're a good player, you know, in European stage, we've been at games where good good players have, have strutted their stuff and they come off, and the Rangers Celtic fans, you know, applaud them off. And I think the Rangers supporters knew they were watching a world class operator in Harry Kane and scored two great goals, and and they gave him a great a, a great applause off. I think Spurs will be very strong this year. I think they'll be you'll be up there. And uh, for Rangers, it was no disgrace really to get beat for them. Yeah, I'll tell you why I like um, what uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is doing, uh, Ruffy, is because uh, I'm old school. I like wingers. I like players that can go past uh, other players, a wee bit of trickery uh, as well. And he's got Matondo, who looks Mm. really good in that friendly, um, certainly days. But he's got a trick or two. He's got a wee step over. And then you've got 
Ken on the other side. Um, this Rangers side is going to change. Um, you know, Suter's in at the back. Kolak got his goal. Lawrence, Matondo, Tillman, Ben Davis. Um, there are some that we don't know we've got to see, but I like to mm -hmm. look at Matondo and I like wingers because you score right. goals when you get supply, Ruffy. Yeah, well, Matondo, we played... Uh who did we play at the weekend? We were in Montrose. Yes. And uh, Chapman Holland was there, mm -hmm. the academy at Rangers. Holland, and yeah. he said, that boy is the fastest thing that he has ever seen. Is that right? And coming to Scotland. Yeah. He, he just, he gets so much ability, but speed to burn. And, and that's going to be the exciting bit of what you're talking about, players like that coming like that. Yeah, um, and, and of course, uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst after the game against Tottenham. Uh, I think he mentioned all the signings that have come in. That looks as if um, that's the business done for Rangers this season. I won't lie, we, we hopefully uh, uh, add a new player in, in the next coming days. Uh, I think then we'll be... You know, finish with the uh, with the window uh, if, if if no one goes. But uh, yeah, if, if we have you know confirmation that he's a Rangers player, then we will announce also who it is. So um, that's Rangers uh, obviously signing various players, and, and he's talking about Yilmaz um, mm -hmm. is possibly their last bit of business. Um, I always treat. I always treat that with a pinch of salt because, as Giovanni Van Bronckhorst knows, if there's somebody goes out the <coughs> door, you suddenly wait to that tail end of the transfer window and you, you push the board for one or two others just to, to sneak in there. You know what managers are like. There's never enough players. Yeah, there. they'll always want one more. Uh, Ruffy knows that for his manager at Thistle. Um, they always want another player in. And listen, it could be Ryan Kent, Morelos, with <laughs> speculation about them two for, it seems, years now. Yeah. You know, it might be that some <coughs> big club in England comes in and, and, and offers Rangers money that they can't turn down, and then you know you've got to go and replace them. But I think Rangers, you know, ins and outs have lost. Obviously, I think Bassi has been a huge loss. But when you're getting that sort of money for him, you know, bought him for about three, four hundred grand, and you're getting twenty million. Yeah, I think you've got to take that money. It's a great deal for Rangers. Um, you know, the parts and money and that as well. So I think Bassi's the, I think Bassi's the deal. I mean, I liked Aribo. I liked yep. I liked his left peg, Ruffy. I thought he was I thought he was dangerous uh, when he was on his game. Mm. Um, really good to watch. But Bassi this was a guy a year ago that know, wasn't getting a regular game. I the, think the, it's a fantastic the, piece the of business. The transformation in him, I mean, he 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 picked a, he picked the right game of a great game in the Europa League final. He was absolutely outstanding, and yes. the eyes of the world are watching that. You big European clubs, English clubs, yeah. you know, and the Ajax obviously came in a huge club in, in, in European terms and, and give Rangers an offer that they can't refuse. And I think it's great for Rangers now that they're starting to get big fees in. You know, a lot of directors at Rangers have, you know, put their money in their mouth. You know, they've put money into the club. Yeah, and at some point, yeah. you're going to want some of that money back. And Rangers have made what 30, 40 million uh, in transfer fees uh, over the last year or two. So. It's good to see them getting some some return for their money. Yeah, absolutely. I did see a TikTok um, a message from Bassi going, "Why would I not join Ajax? Great club, you know. Really <laughs> looking forward to it." TikTok is just another form yeah, of social media. Yeah, don't I've worry about it. I saw it. I saw some. Yeah. <laughs> You're still playing snakes. Yeah, I don't know how you got on. <laughs> He's still, yeah. Ruffy's still playing snakes <laughs> and ladders on his Nokia 3410. <laughs> but um, there are pictures that you can do FaceTime with your friends, yeah. uh, Ruffy. You can show them your MBE. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's that, that that's Rangers' aspect of it. Celtic got a, a two 0 win over uh, Norwich. I, I think the key element of the major PR for Celtic over the summer time was the uh, confirmation of Vickers and uh, Jota signing their deals. I think Celtic fans after that are saying everything else is the icing on the cake. Yeah, I think that was the two main ones that they wanted to get done. I think particularly Jota, you know, the Celtic fans were desperate for him to come in a permanent deal. Uh, I think Carter Vickers is probably a more important signing because, you know, a leader at the back, you know, great player for me, great defender. You know, pace, got everything you need in the modern game. So him and Jot are signing Celtic, you know, they need to get another couple of bits of quality in. Um, you know, and they'll, they'll maybe try and get, I think, one more in, one or two more in Celtic. But they look strong now. They look strong in the wide areas. They look strong up front. And, uh, you <coughs> know, for me this season, Celtic and Rangers, there's not going to be a lot between them. You know, I fancied Rangers strongly last season, as you know, at the start of the last season. But this season, I think both squads look very strong. You know, they both could play. That that, that is the horrible thing about could, it. Rangers could, get two Rangers could put yep. one eleven and another eleven. Celtic could put one eleven and another eleven yeah. and beat all the other teams yep. in the Premier League. But Ruffy, I still think Ange Postecoglou wants two or three others. I still think he thinks the team's short. Yeah, well, I think last year before he came in, it was an absolute mess, and he he delved in and brought four or five in. 
you know, he sort of I just tick along and the ticking along resulted in winning just about having and playing really entertaining football. It was fantastic. But now I think he's got his head down now and saying, yeah, I can get better quality. And looking at the quality he's brought in, if he brings in the same kind of quality again, they're just going to move on to another sphere. Yeah. Um, and just with that in mind, um, you know, he's got... He's got Aaron Moy, who I think might, you know, he's certainly deployed in a kind of a defensive midfield mm. to allow McGregor to push forward. Where do you think they need uh, other players? I mean, a Yeti will not see the light of day. So yeah. is it another striker? Is it, you I know, don't know got the Bernabe for the, for the yeah, left-hand left side. Left back. You know? A possibly another centre midfield player. Um, I think Celtic are strong in, in, in the forward areas. I, I think, think they're missing a number 10. Yeah, like a, a 10, you know, a, a Moravchik type, I know they don't grow on trees, but somebody <laughs> like that, you know, who who can go and, go and create. Um, yeah. they, look, they look strong up front. Uh, Maida scored a great goal at the weekend. You no know, good goal. Uh, Giacomakis, Kyogo. So I think they're, they're, you know, they're strong in the forward areas and the wide areas, but I think maybe a, a wee number 10 uh, just out of... It would maybe help Celtic. Yeah, did you listen to, I mean, Ruffy, 20, 20, where were you 25 years ago, Ruffy? Uh, I was at STV, where would you have been? Would you, Real nine, Radio. Nine, nine, 1997, did you listen to the broadcast of Ruffy 25 years ago? No. Um, 25 years ago, Ruffy was like, who's Henrik Larson? Um, was it? <laughs> was it? 25 years ago. I think ago. a lot of people, when they came in the first <laughs> game, were going, who's Henrik Larson? Yeah, 25 years ago. And then obviously, that was like Hugh Keevens with an Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was at that game, I was, I was, a, I was an apprentice. I, I'd, I'd just signed for Hibs. Yeah, I would just signed for who Hibs and uh, Jack Charnley. Yeah, he's come after Chick him. Chick no, him off and hit an absolute uh, screamer from yeah. 25 yards. You'll never get a bigger Celtic fan than, than Chick, Chick, Chick Charlie. And, and, and that was last and start, I remember it. Yeah. You were, and Hibs were top of the league. Hibs were top of the league after three or four games and they get relegated. But, I mean, we all know. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Is that, is that, that was the season they get relegated. But we all know what Jim Duffy. after that with Larson. It just. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, you were calling for his head on real radio, real radio. Weren't it was you? only after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I played, I played against him, and I can remember in a tunnel at Celtic Park. The first time I played against Larson, and I couldn't believe how small he was. I couldn't believe how small he was. Is that right? Because he's the best player. He's he's about five nine, five ten, and you've never seen somebody leap. Mm. How many six foot five centre halves did he get, get above and then head of the ball? I couldn't believe how small he was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, at 650,000 pounds 25 years ago, a lot of people were wondering, but they didn't take too long uh, to wonder because he was an absolute mm. uh, sensation. Um, but uh, that's Rangers and Celtic for you. You can give us your thoughts on it as well. There's lots of good points. I mean, we're only like speculating. I, I, I'm like Tam, I always like uh, a number 10, although I think there was a very good point that was made there Um from somebody saying, you know, Celtic will not be, uh, there won't be any other midfielders. Uh, Hatati um, is, uh, and O'Reilly will fill these roles, says Paul Martin, um, Paul Andrews, sorry. Um, it's, not a, it's not a bad shout from Paul. I, I mean, Hatati has apparently <coughs> just hit the ground running again. He's just, he looks the business, O'Reilly. I don't know, I, I, I Rogic is gone. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think you need somebody who, can do something special in Europe, whether that's a winger or a striker or something up front. Um, you know, the way Ange Postecoglou wants to play, uh, I'd like to see somebody a wee bit creative. I love a number 10, but then again, the priority I think that a lot of Celtic fans will be asking is, yes, it's going to be a great race between Celtic and Rangers, but in Europe, because of what Rangers have achieved, I think Celtic fans will be looking and saying, can this team produce something because they're automatically into the group stages? Yeah, I think that, that Rangers showed last season that, uh, that your Scottish clubs are capable of doing something in Europe. I think that obviously the Champions League does step up again, but nobody would have, would have thought Rangers would have got to the Europa League final. And it just gave Scottish football a wee bit of pride back. People going, oh, the Rangers, they've they got to the final. Scottish football must be decent. You know, Celtic fans are going to go on a similar run. They want to be competitive. The last few times Celtic have been in the Champions League, they've not been competitive. Yep. You know, they've, get, they've, get, they've been battered. Okay, they've been in difficult groups. But if you're in a difficult group, you know, I, I don't see Ange Postecoglou going and, and 
shutting the back door and I think he's going to be a Brendan Rodgers type whereas yeah. we're just going to go and attack you know if you score two we'll score three and when you come up against your PSGs and your Barcelonas it's no, you can't do that you know you've got to kind of be more pragmatic <laughs> as you know oh, yeah and you remember Ruffy do you remember us <laughs> watching the game in the new camp and thinking pass the ball for the back <laughs> well he said to me at one point I'll never forget this he turned around to me in the commentary and he said this could be 10 uh, I mean honestly yeah. at one point I'll never forget it I was watching Kieran Tierney in the left back position, and he was being overlapped by Barcelona's left back Eric Abidal, <laughs> and, and even he was—he looked yeah. shell shocked, didn't he, Ruffy? Yeah, I mean, I think the whole team were shell shocked. Uh, I don't think there was any more shell shocked than that goalkeeper who lasted what is it, two or three weeks? Yeah, Doris De Vries. Yeah, but he was good with the ball at his feet. Oh, he was you fantastic. Know, not, he he could, just couldn't catch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, he could pick a pass out to the defender, but other than that, um, they get battered. I, I, I wonder, Tam. I think that's what a lot of Celtic fans are really excited because of the way it ended. Celtic winning the title, the way they played, um, and I think they'll be looking and saying, "Okay, second season now, you've got a full team that Ange Postecoglou is building, like Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Both of them now." have had that summer, they're building their team. Um, there's no hint that you can't turn around and say to Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, you know, this is the DNA of Steven Gerrard's team. This is his team now, the way he'll play. Ange Postecoglou winning the title, can he take it on another level? And I think the other level is everybody looking at Europe. Yeah, they've got to be competitive. You know, they've got to be in that Champions League group and, and at the very least finishing third. You know, you can't be finishing last and getting beat every game. You've got to be competitive. You've got to go and try and take a couple of scalps. You know, it's difficult the, the money that the clubs have got in Europe now. You, you're going to be third seed or whatever, fourth seed. Then it's difficult to get into that top two. But, you know, just going back to the number 10, I don't think Celtic have got room for a number 10 in their team. I just, the way they play, the high press, yeah. there's no there's no a number, it's a 4 3 3 or whatever. You know, and you've not really got a number 10, you're two up front, one behind. Celtic play three in the midfield and three up front, two wide men and a centre striker. I don't think Celtic have got <coughs> the room for a number 10. I don't think they fit into the way, the way Ange wants to play. Yeah, OK. Um, well, that's kicked me right where the sun <laughs> don't shine. Thanks for that, Sam. Um, just out of the players that, are, that have gone that are no longer going to be in Scottish football, Ruffy, uh, there's been a few that have been shifted on. Um, I'm interested to see how Karamoko Dembele um, does uh, where he's uh, obviously moved out to Brest um, and of course there's guys like Nier Beton and Rogic uh, have left our shores um, Joe Aribo, bassi has gone as well um, it'll be interesting to see if we can replace that quality I know that there's there seems to be real strong suggestions that possibly Kima Roof could be on his way as well yeah, well, we all know what the what the attraction is. If it's not in the English Premiership, it's the Championship, and, and even they're paying more money than what some of the players we've got that we're talking about, and that's why they go there. You know, obviously they're playing against. I would have to say the majority of better players. It seems to be the be all and end all to play in the English Premiership, and if you can get a club down there, then that's where you go. But yeah. the thing for me is, I, I, I'm glad that there's a lot of your Scottish boys that are playing down there are now beginning to establish themselves like Sir Armstrong and all them in the, in the teams in the Premiership and that could be only good for us. Yeah, the downside to that is somebody's going to get Billy Gilmore and Nathan Patterson because mm. they're not getting games. That's, the, that's the, the dilemma for really good players with a tremendous potential. When they get to the English Premier League, you're not guaranteed a game and those two, I think, I think Billy Gilmore's time has been wasted at Norwich. Yeah, so um, as, a, as a poor move for him. He's got to make another move because he's not going to get a game at Chelsea and you only have to look at um, Nathan Patterson. He's, I think Everton are going to be in big trouble this season. Yeah, Billy Gilmore, firstly, I think that was a poor move for him to go to Norwich City. You know, he go to a team that is going to be bottom three all season, you know, not getting a lot of the ball, getting getting a doing every week, you know, getting some from tankings from from bigger clubs. I think that was the wrong move. He needs to go to a team that's going to dominate the ball. He's got plenty of the ball, you know, going and attacking and expressing himself, no defending for 90 minutes. So I thought whoever, whoever had, you know, advised that move for him, I think was wrong. Uh, so I think I'd like to see him going to a team, might, might even be a top end championship team, um, you know, going, going and, and attacking. But Patterson, I think he'd only played, what, 25, 30 games for Rangers and then he goes to Everton. It's a huge step up to go to the Premier <coughs> League in England. I don't think he was ready for it, but 
I don't blame him for taking the move. I don't blame Rangers for taking the money. You know, but he wasn't ready for me. He's got if you go for Scottish Premier League to the English Premier League, you've got to have a hundred, hundred fifty games under your belt to go straight into a team. Yeah, he was. He, he didn't have the experience, but I understand why the move happened for all parties. I, I'm, I'm surprised Rangers had to be on the phone for Gilmer, just as a loan. You know, because yeah. you look at Arfield and you look at Davis, still excellent players, but you would think Gilmer and that Gilmer team would play every week for Rangers. Would be fantastic. Yeah. I think you know. Gilmore play every week for Rangers yep. or Celtic. Yep, absolutely. You know, um, he's a good player. Um, but uh, whether they are able to, um, well, whether they want to consider uh, a move for either of these players, I have my doubts on it. But nevertheless, I, I do hope they pick the right clubs and get regular football because it's great for us um, from certainly a Scottish perspective. Give us your thoughts on uh, the season. What are you looking forward to? Uh, what do you make of some of the players that we've been talking about? We have actually mentioned quite a number of, of players that are coming to our shores and hopefully they light up our game. Um, and there are other players that we will discuss. Here are the the odds so far it's early days but here are the odds on uh, the teams for the premiership uh, celtic uh, six to four on rangers 11 to eight it's tight as you would expect uh, ross county early favorites roughly 10 to three uh, to go unbeaten in the season celtic are 25 to one rangers 33 to one and the odds for the top scorer uh, kyogo at seven to two Gia Kamakis at five to one, uh, Morelos at eleven to two, and Kolak at uh, ten to one so far. Uh, Tam, um, I know that we are all going to put for the predictor this season our suggestions, our predictions in an envelope, mm -hmm. and then we're going to obviously seal that envelope and have some fun with it. We haven't been out for the meal with Cowan yet. We've obviously got to get yeah, that motoring. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, looking forward to my to my free meal, but. I think when you look at the odds, I think that Rangers last season were overwhelming favourites to win it. Uh, I think them being underdogs might might suit Rangers. You know, might suit the Rangers supporters. You know, Celtic are favourites and they won the league last year. But I think it's going to be nip and tuck all season. I can't. I can't see more than a six or seven point gap opening all season between the two of them. Um, I think that both of them are, are so strong, so much strength and depth that they will win most weeks uh, in the Premier League here, and it will come down to we see it every year. But the old firm games are going to be huge. Yeah, um, uh, were, they as, were they the determining <laughs> factor for you, Ruffy, in the season? Celtic, you mean this season or last season? Last season. No, I think last season we were all taken by surprise with the players that he brought in and the immediate reaction was, what, players for Japanese players, what, what, what's that all about? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, we then saw the quality that they had because nobody thought, even though he brought three or four in, that they were going to change fortunes with the way Rangers were playing and they were so far ahead of them but you know these guys come in and then Gio Kamakis come in and he got his act together started scoring goals so you know I think everybody was taken by surprise I think it's the, the quality that the two teams have this year we've already discussed that both of them have got two teams actually they could put on the park and I think you're saying 25 points I think it'll be more than that Yeah I think the concern, concern for Rangers fans would be the winter break again I think the last couple of seasons Rangers have come back and been miles off. Well, how is that going to work this year with the World Cup? How's that all? There'll be a shutdown out? from We're November. Shutting November. November the twenty third to December. There's something. Yeah. And then there's the a final. shutdown again in January. Are we up and running? No, we're up and no, running. Up and running. So there's no. Aye. You'd so have the schedulers at the SBFL yeah, needing yeah. resuscitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're talking about the November, <sighs> December as they're shut down. Yeah. You, you're not asking that really <laughs> uh, for any great insight of care into the yeah. Scottish game. You're wor you're wondering when you and your wife can go on a holiday, aren't you? <laughs> you? Well, we will actually, the Championship will be playing through the World Cup. Yeah, all right. Uh, we, so we don't you don't get any players away with any teams, no? That's all. Uh, World Cup. Not at this moment. No, <laughs> no, exactly. Um, I knew I could tell by his... He's yeah. thinking about holidays with my... Yeah, like Turkey, golf. Yeah. Um, listen, of the other sides, um, sadly we won't have... We won't have Andrew Shiny with us this season to talk about Aberdeen. We will have a new Aberdeen correspondent, but nevertheless, I'm looking at Aberdeen. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment because this is real pressure. I, I think people were putting maybe two and two together uh, on this one with Martin Boyle being in the stands watching them at the weekend. Um, he's, Jim, from, he's from Aberdeen, isn't he? Jim, Go that way. Jim Goodwin kicked that one right into touch, but um, I'll tell you, if, if, if Jim Goodwin might be kicking it into touch, but if I was him, I'd be on the phone to Dave Cormack saying, "Listen, get get this is the caliber of player we need at Aberdeen if we're going to win games." Yeah, listen, I, I, I know Martin Boyle's team get relegated. Uh, he might be forced into taking a cut, 
a cut from 20 grand a week to something. So I don't think Aberdeen can get anywhere near that. I think Martin Boyle, if I'm Martin Boyle, I stay there for another year. See my last year of my contract out and then I come back on a free to Aberdeen or Hibs. You know, Hibs obviously has got a big, a big connection there. Um, played with the club in the past. I think his wife still plays with Hibs, and uh, but he's from Aberdeen, so I think that was only that'd be only two. I think he would come back to. I don't think Celtic Rangers would be would be interested in Martin Boyle. No, um, but it would be nice to see him back this season. I think if you're wasting your, I mean, listen, money talks. Uh, you know, uh, there's no point in asking him, Tom. Would you <laughs> would you sit in Saudi Arabia on a deal and never kick a ball? Yeah, absolutely. Would absolutely. He didn't have so his I. golf clubs. Uh, <laughs> <and> his, uh, <laughs> And his overall golfing play, you you do the same, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Listen, yeah. short career, got to look after yourself. And that's the only reason he went to Saudi Arabia was for cash. Yeah. Let's be honest. Okay, Fair Aberdeen, play. are you enamoured by I him? think No, I think Aberdeen will be good this year. I think, <coughs> I think they'll be good. Why? I know Ruffy said that they've they've not played anybody. Fair enough, but you're still going to go out and win games. And I just think the confidence, he's had a clear out. You know, he's got everybody out who he wanted to get out. Yeah. He's, he's spent, spent a, few, a couple of quid. Uh, you know, the, the Macedonians, the, the, the boy they brought in, the, the striker. Well, they've got uh, uh, Ramadani, Richardson, Stewart, um, Miofsky, Miofsky, Scales, Roos and Lopez. So Miofsky and they've signed you know, Lopez from Benfica, you know, for a fee as well. So um, I think Aberdeen will be good this year. I, I th don't think they'll be any worse than last year. Yeah. And I think that the, if you're an Aberdeen fan, you've been very encouraged by the start of the season. Yeah, I'm just looking here. 15, 18, 21 players out yeah. at Aberdeen. And no, no, I was listening to the obviously the Aberdeen game uh, the weekend there and all the wee small changes he's made. Jim Goodwin, you know, he's changed the two dugouts. He's changed the mm. dugout. Did you see why yeah. once they changed the two dugouts? He's changed the two dugouts because one of the dugouts is near the near side linesman. If you can have a go at him. Yeah. For that dugout yeah. rather than the other <laughs> one. <laughs> so, yeah, and then he's also changed the warm up. The Aberdeen warm up used to be some part, but now they're warming up in front of their home fans, and he thinks that'll be a significant. So he's had a lot of subtle changes. He's, he's just went in there and had a complete. He's still doing his lap of honour. Lap of honour after the game. That. Well, to be fair, by that. the way, he, he'll need to do some kind of lap. I think they need to get. <laughs> I think they really need to get it going. Uh, good luck to. Um, Dundee United as well because it, it, you mentioned Stephen Fletcher I like Craig Sibbald uh, mm -hmm. I think he's a nice nice neat and tidy player good wee bit of skill about Sibs yep. I've, always, I've loved him since his Falkirk days yep played with Sibs at Falkirk uh, the only thing I've said it in the show before the only thing that stopped him going to a higher level was pace a uh, yardler pace he's a talented football player Jack, Jack played with him at Falkirk as well I've known him as a kid so Jack's known him for a long time as well and I think Stephen Fletcher's a great signing uh, to get Dylan Levitt back from Man United brilliant so and they've got a really, really thriving youth academy down United. They've got a lot of young boys coming through. I think they 16 or 18 debuts over the last couple of seasons. <coughs> so I think they've got a nice blend up there and a good manager. <coughs> yeah, I like what you're saying, Tam, about um, Dundee United. I, I like Jack Ross. Um, I think they can have a real go at hearts. But no surprise, he'll give me a kicking for this, Ruffy. But um, the Jambos, for me, have bought the right type of player. And, and, and the likes of Alan Forrest to create. And they've brought Shankland in as well. I think they're going to be... You know, as strong again in third place. I think they will be third. Uh, no hesitation in saying they'll be third, and they'll be third because yeah, they, they bought wisely, and they'll be third because they've got a support now that hang on in there every home game, prepared to put money into the club. You know, and I think they'll just go from strength to strength. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not agreeing with Tam and Aberdeen. I still don't think they've got. I mean, I don't even know who the centre halves are. Yeah. I don't think they know where McCrory's playing. I don't, I don't think really strength. I, well, I think he's a centre mid. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the goal he scored at the weekend. But the players have brought in. You know, they've still got to prove. I don't think they've played anybody yet. The, the first game next week will be a, a, not the judge, but it will be a judge of where they've came when they play play Celtic at Parkhead. Yeah. So, I, I, if you were going to ask me where they'll be, I think they'll be going. Fourth, fifth, or sixth. Yeah, it, Shankland for me is a is a good acquisition for the. Oh, Jambos I think he's a, it's a tremendous signing. Uh, you know, it hurts to say that, but, but I think he would he would walk into the Hibs team. Yeah. You know, I think he's I think he's I've liked Shankland for for a long time. Uh, remember, I was a young kid at Aberdeen, St. Mern, went to United, and Coley got his career back in track. You know, he turned into a, a personal trainer. He was always carrying a wee bit of weight. Got himself sorted. Got himself fit. And it's been an upward trajectory ever since for Lauren Shanklin. So I think that him coming in, you know, he's at the, you know peak of his career at the minute. 
you know, he's a 25, 26 year old, you know, he's coming into Hearts as a number nine and I think he can go and get 15, 20 goals for Hearts, I really do. Yeah, and I'm just looking at all the other teams and, and wondering if Ruppy is going to plump for Ross County to get relegated this season. I know that we've got a number of people who watch us up in Dingwall, enjoy the programme uh, and I just want... I just wonder if he's going to put that in the envelope, Tom, because I'm uh, looking. Kelly, interesting to see how they do. Um, you've also got Livingston, who undoubtedly, I mean, I tipped them to get relegated last season. They confounded everyone. Um, and then you've got the likes of St. Johnson, who I think are going to be in the mire. Oh, St. Johnson. I think that Callum Davidson's under a little bit of pressure. I think that uh, they've not, again, the League Cup, you know, they've not been good. They've not, you know, they've not been good in that either. And... You know, I think the St. Johnson fans, I think the, the, the romance of winning the two cups has wore off. I think obviously a lot of St. Johnson fans, they give them a job for life after the two cups, but there was a bit of descent towards the end of the season. They only just stayed up in the last, you know, against Inverness. I think if they start the season poorly, I think that Callum will be under a bit of pressure. I don't know if they've really strengthened the squad. They've brought a few players in, but if they really strengthened the team, mm. I still think goals is going to be a problem for St. Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruffy? Not Ross County. No. Uh, what? Not Ross County, no. I've had I some think. dealings with... Has Roy McGregor no, given you... No, a, yeah. I bumped yes. into Malky Mackay at Inverness at the end of the season there and he was telling me what he was going to do, build on, uh, as what he'd done this year. He tapped into the English market and brought all right, some quality players up or Kay's lost a couple of them. But if he keeps bringing that kind of quality to Ross County, I think they'll be better than most of the others. Yeah, OK. Um, listen, you can give us your view. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. You can watch the show live on our app as well, Monday to Friday at 4 o'clock till 5, or indeed you can get it on the catch-up. Uh, on the app, we've got all the breaking stories. You can get them on the website as well. There's uh, a lot of big changes coming on PLZ Soccer. Hopefully you will like uh, the content that we are providing for you if you want to stay up to date with Scottish football. We'll be covering European football as well. There's uh, a big expansion on the way, and I hope you can enjoy the ride with us all. All the team uh, will have special guests. There's one-to-ones, there's lots of great content coming up and of course as well as uh, our regular reporter Kerry out there there'll be uh, new additions to the team because as ever uh, Tam you've got to make signings you have obviously you've lost a few in, uh, in the summer window then you've got to try and strengthen so I'm looking forward to see who you, br you brought in you know Charlie Adams has he got a gig yet Charlie, no. So yeah, we'll he might miss, be, we'll he might be on the phone wanting want his job back but it would be too late and Richard's gone to Detroit uh, is that what he signed for, is it? Yeah, I think he's going yeah. there to play uh, football in America. Superb. Um, as well. Which, uh, so I think Charlie, is Charlie doing a pre-season? No. If he's not, I think he'll retire. I think he'll, I think he'll, I think he'll I think, chuck it. I think the boots are, are well and truly hung up, do you? No, I think he was quite interested to put something back into the game, maybe teach the youngsters at some club. Yeah. Which I think he'll be a good uh, role model, as long as he's not talking about driving or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, that takes you off the duty. <laughs> um, we've, <laughs> you, but, you really are a bad man. <laughs> um, nevertheless, we wish Charlie the very best of luck and Richard as well. Really good lads. Great to have them uh, back on the show. We will have lots uh, more. Uh, to discuss not only on this couch with our regular uh, pundits, but we're going to have special guests on here as well to join us all through the season. We're going to take the fight to uh, each and every one of the other broadcasters because um, there's not many doing five days a week um, with uh, our broadcast on YouTube. So hopefully you're enjoying the the coverage and of course we will be spreading the word out on social media as well download the app if you can the plz soccer app and also hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel we'll be uh, giving you details of some special things that we've got in the shop as well as competitions too a couple of things i want to mention great to see um, a testimonial for uh, gary lock i thought that was great there was a whole uh, run of events for Lockie. I like him. I've liked him since the day and hour I landed in Edinburgh. He was such a great boy. I remember him as a youngster and it was great to see the Hearts fans out there paying tribute to him. Yep, yeah, I've got a lot of time for Gary as well. Yeah, obviously I played against him when he was at Hearts and I've bumped into him at different do's and functions and really nice guy and they deserved his, deserved his testimony. He's been a great servant for Hearts as a player now. I think he's a player liaison. Yeah, he's yeah, an ambassador, ambassador yeah. involved with the club so Hearts through and through. So you like to see guys like that getting a wee turn. These are, these are the players that are <laughs> rarely, yeah. uh, I think, you know, when you're looking at players that should be rewarded, that's the type of player. 
Yeah, they're the ones, you know, have made an awful lot of money out of the game compared to other other people in the game just now. So, yeah, if somebody spends that amount of time, I don't know how many years it is, but certainly fantastic. And I'd like to have thought there would be a bit more at the game than 8,000. Yeah. Well, I You mean, know, I know things are gone and people yeah. are doing things and all that, but I would, I would have thought 12,000, 13 would have been a, a great reward for the service. He's given to the club. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people, um, obviously, at other events that showed their um, commitment and, of course, support to Lockie and thanking him for what he uh, did for Hearts, uh, not only as a player, but now uh, continues to do as an ambassador. Great lad, well worthy of it. Just before we go, I must just mention, uh, Ruffy, um, we were on holiday, obviously, when the news broke about uh, the sad passing of Andy Gorham. It was something that I think a number of people were well aware that Andy he had uh, cancer which um, I think was terminal and uh, you know I think a lot of Rangers fans and a lot of people across Scottish football and beyond rightly paid tribute to him for his qualities as a goalkeeper through the many clubs that he played for uh, particularly poignant for yourself because uh, it must have been um, something that meant so much to you for the family to ask you to carry the coffin. Certainly was, yeah. Me and Andy went back in 1985. He actually took over for me at Hibs. He was a young 21-year-old coming in. I could see in the first training day he was going to be something special, lacking in height, but not in quality. And then obviously the Scotland days, we shared a room together. So yeah, it was, and it was, it was very nice for, for Andy to, to ask me to carry the coffin. And uh, the last week was, was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Horrible, horrible. For anybody out there who have got family, through that kind of disease is a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah, absolutely. Very difficult for the family. And our thoughts go out to uh, all his uh, friends and members of his family as well. But um, great that you were there on hand, uh, Robbie, uh, in those last few days and, of course, at the funeral ceremony as well. And I think Rangers fans will remember him for a long, long time to come. Uh, if only the two of you had released a book <laughs> on, on yeah, your so shenanigans, yeah, it would have been a bestseller. Had, uh, yeah, it would have been. I mean, uh, <laughs> you see, Robbie's just gone back there, you can uh, see him. It, it certainly would have been. It was uh, the, the, just a lasting memory when he, just the week before it, when he said, he whispered to me, he said, I'd like you to carry the coffin. He says, I'm taking a chance because I know you might drop me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that, sums up, that sums up the kind of a dark humour of it all. But nevertheless, uh, great from yourself there, Ruffy. Uh, lots to look forward to. Tam, uh, are you going to stick with that swept back kind of a... It's DiCaprio, um, isn't it? Yeah, it's a kind Leonardo of... Leonardo DiCaprio. Do you know what it's from? It is. It's The Departed. It's the movie with uh, DiCaprio and uh, Jack. It's not Nicholson. a bad lookalike, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, no, we're only talking about the beard. We're not talking about what's <laughs> under right. it. All but right. uh, are you going to stick with that? I don't know. See, my wife doesn't like the beard. Uh, so she's been imploring me to take it off, but I might, I might just keep it. Okay, uh, on that note, thanks, Ruffy. I'm not even going to look at you. So, <laughs> Don't, Ruffy. That's ten, that's ten. You were only on one day. That's ten years and I'm not even looking at him. Anyway, it's the catchphrase that, we'll, that we will leave on today's programme. <laughs> thanks very much to Tam. Thanks very much to Ruffy. Don't forget to subscribe to PLZ Soccer's football show. We're on Monday to Friday. We're back uh, and hopefully you will enjoy our company and our special guests over the course of the season and our coverage which will be extensive uh, right across Scottish football and beyond. Thank you to so many of you who've been uh, joining uh, our feed on YouTube and of course talking about football as well. We uh, certainly rely on you to support us and hopefully you'll do in greater numbers over the course of the season. From Ruffy, Tam and myself, thanks for watching.